took me too long to reach the point where I'm making this video. I don't know why it took so long. But today we'll finally look at the Harrington and Richardson Handy Rifle. These are fantastic rifles. For all the European viewers and viewers in other parts of the world, I'm not sure if you have access to Harrington and Richardson Handy Rifles or the Model 1871, which I'll show you in a moment. But I just wanted to make a couple of comments before I start looking at these guns. The Harrington and Richardson is a fantastic rifle in many ways. The price was very low and I have to use past tense because unfortunately and evidently they stopped making them and they're not going to resume manufacture and I had a lot of messages from people saying they're going to make them again. I bought something that looked like a Harrington and Richardson but when I examined it it was made in China which isn't the end of the world but it's not a Harrington Richardson made in the United States. Anyhow, the handy rifle was around for a long time. There were shotgun models that preceded the handy rifle. It's a typical break open action. There's a thumb release for the break open action here. This one is very stiff. I thought I better get a few on the table because I had so many requests to comment on them. You might be surprised. I have nothing bad to say about this rifle. Uh, some of these cost two or three hundred dollars. I don't know. This one's in 500 Smith & Wesson. I bought it because there aren't that many rifles available in 500 Smith & Wesson. And with the break open action you have a standing breech that can take virtually any amount of pressure because it's a fixed breech. So all you have to do is make sure the action stays closed and you, you can chamber just about anything. And um, with the hammer you have com complete firing control. The trigger, well again, I'm probably not the best guy to comment on triggers because frankly I've never had trouble with any trigger. I just fire it, I figure out whether it shoot, is too creepy or rough or whatever. Some of them fire like with one or two pounds, but once you know that then I usually have no trouble working with whatever trigger. That's the 500 Smith & Wesson and uh, this is a spectacular rifle and some of you noticed it sitting behind me on one of the last videos. This is the model they call the 1871. It's the same action. Uh, you, can, you can look at the video picture. You can see, I mean, it's the same action. Push button release. I'm not sure if these aperture sights came with the rifle, but if you want a 4570, I, I can't think of a better rifle to buy. You don't have to tie up much money or mortgage the house, as some of you have um, told me. The firing is simple, very safe. Um, I mean, everybody's talking about decockers, and a lot of the European rifles have very complex mechanisms for accomplishing caulking. An external hammer is probably the simplest way to accomplish complete control of whether the rifle is cocked or not. So that's the 1871 and 4570, and then the one I shot the most is this one. It's in 223. Just an extraordinarily accurate rifle. I actually couldn't believe the groups that I was getting. It, I mean, I think this was $300, which is pretty remarkable. I don't know where they made their barrels, or whether they made their barrels, or what system they used. You know, you can study these things to death or you can just go uh, to a gun show or wherever and get a handy rifle and I'm not sure the rate of twist and actually, you know, these things, I don't care about that stuff. I just set up a target at 100 yards and anybody could pick this rifle up and um, create groups that, that are exceptional. It's, they're quite tight, I have to say, but that's a good thing. That means when they've worn in, they'll be about right. So lockup is positive on all of them, and I've seen quite a few of these rifles, as you probably have. So finally, I thought, well, I better make a video about an, like a practical rifle in many different calibers. Somebody offered me one in 35 Whalen. Somebody else offered me one in 30 odd six for this video, but I thought the 4570 the uh, 500 Smith and Wesson and the 223 were kind of representative and then 
I thought, well, I'll put this on the table. Just as an example, this is a Luxus in 30-06, and I think we've looked at this before. It's the same action, really. I mean, it's a break-open rifle, and this one you can go and spend $6,000 on, or whatever they're charging now. I think they might be kind of limited production or discontinued. And of course, there is some stocking, you know, exceptional things, beautiful wood, and it handles better. Oh, and before I finish, I wanted to say I received a few notes from Germany about Kiplaufs. Kiplaufs, that's a German uh, terminology for a single shot break open rifle. And Kiplaufs are usually, well, they're something like these Luxus rifles. They're normally incredibly well finished, mostly engraved probably more wood removed uh, kind of the higher you go up on the gun ladder the more wood that's removed from the buttstock without weakening it that gives you that dynamic feeling this one is actually pretty good but it could still have some wood removed but in any event um, when you get down to the real world and you want to reach for a rifle that hasn't broken the bank no bitterness nobody in the household can complain about the rifle this Harrington and Richardson is fantastic and I don't know exactly when they come out different articles tell me different things you can google it and in a lot of ways it doesn't matter it it was and is a great rifle and I'm hoping that in due course somebody else starts making them these receivers are steel they're not aluminum some of these guns people ask me to review from current manufacturers they send me a rifle with what looks like a brass receiver and it's supposed to be brass through and through it's just brass plating and I don't want to get into you know saying anything bad about anything but these are steel receivers through and through they didn't plate them with brass because they're not brass they just made them steel put some bluing on them and these will serve you for a lifetime uh, actually if you can find one in 3030 that's what I was looking for I thought that's probably, you know, get one of these with the wood stock. Maybe you can find with a walnut. I don't know why they didn't use just some straight grain walnut. And these can be reshaped or you can buy a better stock if you want, if you want something a little better looking. But as far as practicality, this handy rifle is, in my opinion, about as good as you can get. So there it is for all of you that requested my comments on these fantastic rifles that may or may not be available all around the world, but they should be um, exceptional. And for youth or people who aren't familiar with guns, I mean, how can you go wrong? You can't get confused about how the action works, and the hammer is sort of almost self-explanatory. One of the few rifles that you almost need very little or no training to, to use. And like I said, accuracy for all the ones that I've tried, exceptional and dollar for dollar probably one of the best buys of all time so i hope i did that gun justice probably said a lot of glowing words but they're well deserved and i experienced it myself there's nothing that i can say is bad about these these are great rifles thanks so much for watching um by the way you're sending me a lot of messages and i told you about youtube and all these restrictions that they have on me and other channels if I can't answer your question because I think it triggers a problem on YouTube, I'm going to answer them on Patreon, and I'm not trying to lure you on Patreon. By all means, you can stay away, but I'll put the answers there, and that way I don't have any problem. Hopefully, these, these can be monetized, and I'm gradually getting a feel for what's monetized and what's not monetized, kind of what they want and what they don't want although I couldn't explain it to somebody and I'm still testing it and this video is a test. Anyhow, there it is, the H&R Handy Rifle and uh, somebody's going to send me for sure a question, which one would I say is the best one to buy? Well, I mean, a, a regular one in 3030 or 223 is very useful, but these 1871s and 4570, I mean, they give you the feeling that you're shooting a flintlock or a percussion it's supposed to be a buffalo rifle, and I guess, it, I mean, who knows what a buffalo rifle felt like, but it's a great rifle. And you can watch the bullets coming down at, at uh, 
300 yards and you know hitting within three or four inches of one another at that distance. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks again.